I also had another tweet cooking. I still think this is the most realistic depiction of a uh, panic attack ever caught on camera, and then the clip is me in the gulag accidentally spraying the uh, SS logo is like, that could actually get like 50,000 likes. I had another one, which was like, motherfuckers will actually cook you for ordering chicken teriyaki from a place called like Dragon Sushi, as if you just insulted the entire nation of Japan. I have eaten a lot of good sushi in my life. I've eaten a lot of shit sushi in my life. If I'm going to a restaurant that looks like it's not the best sushi restaurant, if, it's, if they're serving you the little cellophane grass in the styrofoam container sushi, and I'm looking at the menu and I'm like, they don't even do the, you know, just the fish on rice, then I'm like, I'm getting the chicken teriyaki, but I can feel people like judging me. You're like, oh really? You must be a picky eater getting chicken teriyaki at the at the sushi restaurant. No, is my ass just want I would rather eat like good sushi. I don't wanna eat just like a tempura shrimp with like a bunch of mayonnaise shoved in a roll. So yeah, sometimes it's okay, don't get me wrong, but like I think what you know we could phrase it in a more positive way, okay? I feel like what we could also say instead of we need to elevate chicken teriyaki in the public consciousness so it is no longer considered to be the thing that picky eaters get when they go to sushi restaurants. Sometimes it's a thing that you could just get if you go to a sushi restaurant and you look at the menu and all the rolls are called like the fucking hand grenade roll and you're like, I don't want to eat this shit, just give me some chicken teriyaki. I'm not paying you $6.50 for a negatoro roll and then like another $7.25 for a yam tempura roll just to cobble together my own order. Just give me the chicken teriyaki and I don't want the chicken teriyaki bento box. Give me more teriyaki, more chicken, more vegetables, more rice. I don't want two fucked up frozen gyoza that aren't properly cooked in the middle and the other one is like molten hot when you bite in. I don't want that, you said there's tempura, but there's one tempura shrimp and then like eight pieces of fucking stale squash and pumpkin. I don't want that. I don't want the salad where you just grab the pre-made salad mix and then put like, uh, I don't even know what it is, like julienne carrots on top of it. And I don't, sure as shit don't want four pieces of a California roll that the last person didn't eat, so you just moved it onto my plate, okay? Every time you order from a sushi restaurant, somebody who's never left their home state, so chicken teriyaki, really? You should try sushi, it's pretty good. Yeah, I've had sushi. I've had sushi in Vancouver, I've had sushi in Seoul, I've had sushi in Tokyo, I've had in Kyoto, Osaka. Meanwhile, you're, t oh, really? This place in fucking Perth. You really gotta go to Dragon Sushi in Perth. Bro, you can't get the chicken teriyaki at Dragon Sushi in Gananoque, Ontario. This place goes crazy. Get something exotic like a spicy tuna roll. Ugh. Just fucking relax. Bro, you can't order a craft local beer at Yamamoto Sushi in Brockville? Are you crazy? You have to go a real authentic style and get a Sapporo. That's four times more expensive and half as good. Why are you going off so much on bento boxes? Listen, I didn't want to, but I was, I, I mean, I feel like I'm the only person that's saying the truth these days. I feel like the, the bento box is, and, and I like Japanese food. Holy cow. So the thing with the bento box, I, I enjoy Japanese food. And it, I have no problem going to a sushi restaurant. I like sushi. But also, I do feel a little condescended to sometimes when I go to a sushi restaurant and I order chicken teriyaki. People automatically assume like I'm one of those people from TLC that only eats pepperoni pizza with ranch dressing spread on top of it. I'm not. Sometimes the chicken teriyaki just hits the spot better than like a 5 out of 10 dynamite roll or something like that. Now, the bento specifically, I feel like it's the default at a sushi restaurant or any restaurant to order a combo if you get the chance to order a combo. I just find myself... In general, I, I feel like when you get a bento box, you get the thing that you actually wanted, which sometimes is a little bit of sushi, sometimes it's a teriyaki, sometimes it's the tempura, and then the other three to four parts of the bento box are, they, they're half-assed. 
It's a half-assed tempura. The salad is just like straight out of the refrigerator, like Ziploc bag. The dumplings are never any good at all. I'd, I would rather just order something that's good and just have that be that than be like, oh, there's eight things in the box and like one of them's good and the rest of them are kind of horrible. Is there context for YouTube people regarding the sushi? We ordered sushi in my hometown and I got chicken teriyaki and nobody said anything about it. But in my head, I was like, they might. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. And again, people, they, they, they do not like my takes on Japanese foods regularly. So this is not atypical for me to, to get booed off of like the stage for saying something that I believe is, is true. But I'm going to be real with you. I think that edamame is like the most ass appetizer that's ever existed. I don't believe that anybody, uh, A, feels the way I do about you now, but B, when, when someone's like, oh, I love edamame, I'm like, what do you mean you love edamame? Like, they're just beans. It's just beans and salt. And the salt isn't even on the beans, it's on the pod. Like, it's, I don't mind mindlessly eating some edamame, but it's not like, whenever people are really excited for edamame, I'm like, you know, it just tastes like... It's just beans. Okay, and? Well, like, think of all the great Japanese appetizers that are out there. An agadashi tofu. You know, even some sashimi to start or something like that. Think about a, a karage or something like that. Some gyoza. And you expect me to get excited over some salty beans? Like, it's... <laughs> they're okay, but like... You don't have to be excited, just eat your veggies. I have no problem eating my vegetables. This is what's called a an ad hominem attack. A lot of those like Japanese fusion restaurants in Vancouver, they will run. Um, well, they'll have edamame on the menu for the the psychos, but also they'll have like a crispy Brussels sprout or something like that. Way better. Those those are vegetables. By the way, someone in chat said I got chicken teriyaki for lunch. Thanks for the inspiration. I guess all the, I'm not trying to come for all the Midwestern, you know, suburban sushi restaurants that all do Korean food, Thai food, Chinese food, and also hot dogs and hamburgers and a slice of pepperoni pizza for the picky eaters. I'm not trying to insult all those restaurants. There's no need. The reviews speak for themselves. All I'm trying to do is say that I think chicken teriyaki has been unfairly maligned. It's considered a, a consolation food by most people at a restaurant. Like, you never go, oh, I'm really feeling chicken teriyaki tonight. It's always like, uh, nothing else on the menu speaks to me. So I'm going to, maybe I'll try the chicken teriyaki. But honestly, the chicken teriyaki, I, I've been ordering it as a, um, as a first choice lately, and I've been very pleased with the results. You never seem to get a terrible chicken teriyaki. You get some, you get some that are goaded, you get some that are like, you know, mid, I guess as the kids say these days, and then you get some that really bring the heat. There's a lot of chicken teriyakis where when I'm eating them, I'm like, I would, I'm definitely preferring this to sushi. Is orange chicken the most, why, why would I do it in this order? Is orange chicken the most Caucasian thing you can order at an Asian restaurant? Bro, no. It's orange. The most Caucasian thing you can order at a restaurant would be like Caucasian chicken. Which I'm pretty sure is just when you throw like a boneless chicken breast in the air fryer and serve it next to like some Uncle Ben's <laughs> rice pilaf. <laughs> also known as like what I ate uh, every day in college. I got nothing against orange chicken whatsoever. I would, I mean, I don't eat it very much. I would say I'm pro orange chicken though, if I, if I had to choose which side I was on. I mean, if you're at a place that's got orange chicken to begin with, I feel like if it's on the menu, you should order it. Just because what else are you gonna get? You're gonna go to a place that sells like orange chicken plus an egg roll plus like a wonton soup for three bucks and you're gonna be like, oh, can I get the, can I get the regional specialty of this restaurant? Can you give me some soy and garlic fried abalone? I think people are too hard on the orange chicken. Mongolian beef? I'm just gonna level with you on this one, my friend. I'm not sure that Mongolian beef is a real food. That sounds like something I would make up 
if I had like a sauce in my fridge called Mongolian sauce that I got from the grocery store. And I was like, what are we having for dinner tonight? It's Mongolian beef. Wait, is this, uh, <laughs> sorry, Bench Live. Thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Really? It's an American Chinese food classic? Mongolian beef is incredible. Hang on. Well, this is, I, I, there's a difference between American Chinese food and Canadian Chinese food. Like, do you know, hey, my UK fellow viewers here, did you know Americans don't know chicken balls? Oh my God, bro, no way. I'm in shambles right now. I'm serious, they don't know chicken balls. Americans are always like, what's a chicken ball? It's a ball with a little piece of chicken in it, if you're lucky. And then they serve it with like the worst sauce of all time over top of it. Um, okay, Mongolian beef. It's a dish from Taiwan. You lost me. Sliced beef, usually made with onions. Paired with scallions or mixed vegetables, it's often served over steamed rice in the U.S. Okay, I honestly, that tells me nothing at all. I guess I just got to go to P.F. Chang's and order it. Sounds pretty good. Beef, onions, and scallions, and rice. Also sounds like it could describe maybe like a few more things on the menu, but 